Hi there, Martin here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you are all well. It has been an age since I posted a video, but I'm here and this is a turning video rather than one of the new videos from my series, the tools I use and why I use them. What have we got on the lathe today? Well, we've got a wet oak crotch piece. Um, it's about 11 by 11 um, by about... Mm, Five, I suppose after we get rid of the lump on the top and uh, this is a, this is for a customer who was very partial to the oak tree before it came down um, a few months ago and she's asked me to turn a bowl out of it and that's what we're going to be looking at today so the first thing I've got to do is get it onto the lathe now you'll notice on here that um, I've got a nice substantial faceplate on there with some good length screws and it's going onto a chuck rather than a spindle mounted faceplate. This is just a personal preference. With smaller pieces I do tend to use a worm screw but as this is quite a sizable lump a good size faceplate is the way to go. So as this is a pretty raw piece to be honest um, I've got no idea what's inside. This bit here is a little bit rotten, so it could be very interesting on the inside. There does appear to be a little bit of spalting in places. You can't see that just there, but there is a little bit of spalting in there. So it could be a very, very interesting turn. It's nicely balanced, which is very handy, um, being, being a very raw, lumpy piece like this. And the first thing I need to do is get rid of this chunk just here in order to put a, uh, a tenon on there for the chuck. So with my face shield on, I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge to get that done. Then we'll take it nice and steady, half inch bowl gouge, double check, nothing's going to catch all the way around. Everything's locked into position. And then we can just very slowly start to turn that away. Now I've taken most of that lump off, but as you can see, it's still a little bit punky here. And I want to take it down just a little bit more just to see if we can get see if we can get a little bit more solid wood in this little this branch section just here. So a few more cuts and I think we'll be ready to put on a tenon. Okay, that's good. I'm happy with that now. I'm happy to put a tenon on. And I'm going to use a relatively large set of jaws. I'm going to be using these with a 60mm tenon on, which is about two and a half inches, something like that. And that is going to be good enough to hold for the rest of the bowl. Now to make the tenon, I'm going to switch over to a 3 8 bowl gouge and a spindle gouge just so we can make sure that tenon is absolutely perfect for the jaws I'm using. Now 
there we are I'm happy with that now next what we're going to do is we're just going to start to shape the bowl and get the whole blank round because as you can see at the moment it's not exactly round now to do most of this I'm going to sharpen up the half inch bowl gouge um, which is a really sturdy heavy duty tool which will allow me to get round there cut away this big chunky stuff and we can start to make our shape so let's head over to the pro edge and put an edge back on the gouge now my angle of choice for my bowl gouges is 55 degrees which on the pro edge is 45 degrees on the pro set and the third hole on the uh, on the long grind jig So with a nice sharp gouge I can now start to shape the bowl but I will mark on here a foot now I do like a relatively small foot on bowls which I mark by eye you can go through the whole measuring process if you want to which I'm not going to go into today so I'm going to stand back and I'm going to look at the piece and roughly where it's going to be round and say the foot's going to be about there just by that pencil mark that'll do I think it might change so let's get this bowl round and see and see what's inside This is beginning to turn out to be really nice. I'm loving this wood. I'm I'm fairly damp with all of the, <laughs> with all of the with all of the water that's coming out of it. But we've got some lovely figure going on in here and I think when we reverse mount the piece and hollow out the inside that figure is just going to get even better. So we're pretty much round now. By the time I've finished the shape uh, of the piece it will be completely round. We will lose um, the uh, the bark on here, but you know I'm not overly worried about that. The um, the inside figure is going to be the most impressive bit. So I will finish putting the shape on this. Now if you find putting curves on bowls a little bit tricky then have you thought about trying out a curved tool rest? They're really handy, they won't give you the exact curve that you want but because of the way they're made, obviously curved, it does help you pull round a bowl without getting those straight bits on where your hand pulls along a straight tool rest. So I'll do a couple of cuts on here just to get rid of this bit using a curved tool rest and you use it just the same as a straight one but you use the curve of the rest with your heel of your hand on the rest as a guide for the gouge very very nice surface right now I can sand that I can sand that before we reverse mount it into the chuck I won't be putting any finish on it just yet I'm gonna wait until the piece is completely turned inside and out and then the finish is just gonna be a very very simple 
few coats of oil. But now it's been sanded down to 240 grit. I don't need to go any further than that because there's no sanding marks, there's no tool marks, there's no tear out, and of course the finish is just going to be oil. So now we can just flip this round in the chuck and uh, do the inside. So with the bowl reversed and the gouges sharpened, I'm ready to tackle the inside. And we can tell that this is a wet piece of wood because we still, we, we're getting some tannin marks on the, uh, on the face there. So it's very important that we clean our lathe off and our tools after we've finished turning wet wood, particularly oak like this. Right, so it's mounted in the chuck. I'm happy with I'm happy with it being nice and secure. I do have quite a large lump just here, which I need to be careful um, of when I take that off. So I think I'll take that off first and then clean off the face of the piece. And I'll do that with a half inch gouge. So the tool rest has come up just a tiny little bit more and then we can start. I'm not sure how thick the walls are going to be yet. I think they're going to be fairly thin um, but, uh, but we'll see as we get going. Get a little bit more speed into the lathe. Because of the, uh, because of the knot more as I was saying oh yeah because of the knot in there the piece is a little bit unbalanced so I can't really turn very quickly but then you don't need to turn bowls very quickly anyway I have decided to turn this piece on the thinner side. So I'm just working the wall down first. Just working the wall down first before we take out too much bulk. still go a little bit deeper so I'm going to come back up here and take another cut
that feels absolutely lovely. Magic, right? Let's put the little, um, my normal little scallop on the uh, on the rim. There we are. That's it. Job done. Super happy with it. Now I'm going to leave it just for probably 20 minutes, something like that, just to let the uh, just to let the surface dry off just a little bit and enough to let me get uh, enough to let me get the sander in there just to put a, um, a, a sort of a finished surface on there. I'm really happy with how it has actually turned out. The surface is nice. There is a little bit of tear out in there where the wood is a little bit punky from that slightly rotten bit on the outside. And we've still got some very hard wood here so the gouge was bouncing around a little bit on the inside. But otherwise it's absolutely super. And when I finish sanding it, it's going to look mwah, and I'm sure the customer's going to love it. Oh. Oh. Oops, and there we go. Sand it down to 240 again, and it has turned out really, really nice. Now, all I need to do is reverse mount it one last time on a vacuum chuck to remove the tenon. Okay, right, so this bit screws into the back of the chuck. Take my existing tail stop, tail center out put that into the tailstock and then I can just slide that up along there turn the vacuum on and then wind the vacuum chuck on he said just about there and then I can undo the chuck Pull the tailstock away, and there we are, mounted to the vacuum chuck. I can give it a little bit of welly at the moment because it's all supported nicely. And I need to get some really clean cuts going because uh, the wood, as you can see, is a little bit punky. So I'll put an edge back on this gouge. No, I won't. I'll use a fresh one. Yeah, I can't really get the cuts much cleaner than that because this hard bit just here is bouncing the tool around. Let's lower that down a smidge. reasonable given given the fact that this bit was fairly rotten so a little bit of sanding on there and then we'll be good to put a finish on we're just putting on a second coat of Hampshire Sheen Danish oil to the inside of the piece I've already done the outside and I think you'll agree it has come out really really well I'm incredibly happy with it there we go there is the finished bowl it's about 11 by three and a half after all of the turning and it really has turned out exceptionally nice it was a little bit tricky with the very hard bit of the uh, of the crotch with the rest of it here and a little bit of the punky bits there just on the inside but with good tool presentation 
we've managed to turn an exceptionally nice piece for the customer. Many thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Down here are a few videos I think you may find of interest. And if you click just down here, you'll be able to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so just yet. But that's it for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.